Hello, do you have any questions? Yes, but I cannot raise my arm. What? You can't raise your arm like this? hi <laughs>
and so on. By the way, you can use tab to quickly uh, jump through the places where you insert the numbers. When these animations are set, you can use control and the mouse to check if your arm moves properly. All right, this blend space should be finished. You can save it and now we need a way to drive this blend space. In Unreal Engine 5, I needed a new way to, um, to get mouse position info and that's what I came up with. We are going to need a custom player controller. So press right click on your content drawer and on your blueprint actor, create a player controller. Give it a name. And so we don't forget it later, um, we can set it right now so it will be used in game. You can do this here under game mode, edit the game mode and set your new player controller. Right, open it up. And first I'm going to delete everything that's in here. And we are going to put more log logic in here this time. And the node we are going to use to get the mouse position info is called mouse xy to the axis. This node will give us a value from minus one to one, depending in which direction we move the mouse. It also does this in two dimensions. That's why we get a yellow uh, vector value. As a first step, we'll promote this to a variable. So you can drag off the pin and press promote to variable. I called this variable mouse position. In here we will store information each time we move the mouse. Next, we are going to create another variable which we will use to control the sensitivity. So create a new variable, change the type to float and call it by its name. And compile and set the default value to one. Okay, and we are going to add the changes we get from the move x, y to the axis node to our mouse position variable. So search for an add and put it together like this. Now it's time to use our sensitivity. We will multiply it by the axis value we get from our first node and hook it up like this. And now to test this, we can use a print string and check the values we store in our mouse position variable. Uh, hit compile and save and you can test it in the editor. So you can see that the set value doesn't change at all when we move the mouse, but the X and Y values um, do change. And by moving the mouse to the utmost position, I got the numbers we used in the blend space earlier. Well, let's go back into the custom player controller. In here you can delete the print string. And in here you can also change the sensitivity and try out different values. For me, a value of 1 was OK. And this next step is not necessary, but you can also clamp this value right here if you want to be sure that it's always inside the range we defined in that blend space. So once you break the link, you can split the struct pin and get each value as a float. And use a clamp node to keep the values inside a defined range. Sehr gut, but we may not always want to move the arm, so we can use a boolean to decide when we update the position. So create a variable, switch it to boolean and call it something like arm mode. Now in this case, I wanted to create a setup that when I press the left mouse button, it will move the arm and when I release it, it stops moving the arm. So you can search for the left mouse button node and on pressed, we will set the boolean to true and on released, we will set it to false. Using a branch, we can link the arm mode after the mouse axis input.
We may not want to rotate the camera while we use the arm. So in this blueprint we will want to get a reference to the player character which controls the camera movement. After the event begin play I search for the get controlled pawn node and from here we can cast to the third person character. I also promote this pin to a variable so we can always access the third person character from within this blueprint. Now we need our third person character blueprint which is inside this folder. Open it up and in here we will link a branch just after the camera input. In here I also created a new boolean and called it arm mode. Well, this isn't optimal because we have two variables with the same name, but they're in different blueprints and for this case it's okay, but usually I would want to have a different name. Anyways, I link a branch in here and on false it does nothing, sorry, on false it executes the logic and on true it does nothing. Back to the PC and now we can switch this boolean from within this blueprint. So after we set the R mode in of the player controller, we can now get a reference from the third person character and also change the R mode inside the third person character. And we're almost done. The last thing we have to do is change the animation blueprint. So search for the ABP menu and open it up. In here, we want to create a variable in which we will translate the mouse position. So I uh, create a vector and you can call it also mouse position. Now we will need a way to get the data from the player controller. To do this, you can create a variable and change the type to the custom player controller you created. We now have an empty variable, so we need to set it so that the anim blueprint knows which player controller we actually mean. And we can do this in the player controller itself. We can open it up and in the begin play, after we get the reference to the character, you can search to get anim instance directly from the character reference we already have and from here we can cast to the animation blueprint. It's actually called ABP Many, so when you find it, select the node and make the cast. And now we can set the reference inside this blueprint. So drag off this pin over here and search for the variable you created in the animation blueprint. We get a reference to self and plug it into here. back to the animation blueprint. In this sequence we can create a new pin and now we have a valid custom player control reference and we can get the mouse position from it and update the mouse position of the animation blueprint. Now for the last step we will click over here on the ending graph and now we can use our blend space we created earlier. You can find it in this list and drag it onto the blueprint. Now we can use this variable and get the values we will use to drive the blah, blah, blend space. And the final node we are going to create is the layered blend per bone node. And we will link it between the default slot and the control rig. So use this as the base pose. And our BS move arm is will be. <laughs> it's gonna be, you know what I mean. Now for the settings inside the layered blend per bone node, we have to click in here and create a new array element. 
because we use the clavicle as the last bone to move the arm, we will have to type clavicle underscore R in here. If you move a different limb, of course you have to put a different one. Then you also click mesh space rotation, click compile and save, and you can see he's already do stretchy, and we are should be done with this stuff. So you can try it out, play around. Here you go. Muchas gracias para ver este tutorial. And I thought about making a second tutorial on how to slap the Boop. out of mannequins and also do some interaction stuff. So let me know if you would be interested in seeing that. Yep, yeah, that's all. Bye bye.